You're listening to the Ron and Don Show. And yes, my dad's pretty annoying. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Episode number 41 of the Ron and Don Show, only on the Ron and Don Radio Network. People hit subscribe live from the Les Schwab Studios. It really helps us out, doesn't it? Yeah, if you can subscribe and help other people subscribe. So a lot of times folks are, are not really versant in the podcast universe. So if you're new to it, uh, you can subscribe. That would really help us out. Also, you can sync it up to your car, your phone to your car, and you can listen as you drive. Uh, that's a big deal for folks. And so, yeah, subscriber uh, and hit that the notification thing on there really does help us. Yeah. I learned something the other day. I've always heard, I've always heard, and we've always heard as we head into the holidays here, uh, that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so I've shared that with my son, with my nine-year-old. And he's interesting because he has a real... He is a real sensitive human, and he has a very tender heart, uh, and he is a giver. He really is. Uh, and sometimes he says, I'm sorry too much, and I'm like, why? You didn't... It's okay to do things incorrectly. You don't have to be sorry for everything. So we explore sometimes about why he is so sorry, and it reminds me when I was a little boy because a lot of times just to bring peace in my house, I'd always be sorry about stuff. So anyway... We were out getting our haircut at a place called The Shop at the top of Queen Anne uh, the other day. And we got done cutting our hair, and he asked me about this Christmas tree. And on this Christmas tree, it had these Christmas angels, and it had boy angels and and girl angels. The boy angels were pink, and the girl angels were blue because they wanted to mix it up. Sure, why not? A little bit. So they mixed it up this year. So this my, is a, a tree inside it, the, the salon? Yeah, it's one of these giving trees, and, right. and, and I'm sure you've seen one of these before. Is it nicer than my Charlie Brown tree it's that not. you make fun of? No, your Charlie Brown tree is money. It yeah, is absolutely It's about money. three feet tall. With the one ornament on it, it's fantastic. Anyway, uh, we were walking by this tree, and he started asking me about these angels on the tree. And so we started having a discussion. And, and so I explained to him, I said, well, the angel represents a child. The child lives in our community. And what you can do is you can buy a toy, and then you can bring the toy back. You put it under the tree, and the child gets it. He's like, I don't get it. I'm like, okay. So then I explained it to him again. He's like, still don't get it. All right. What did, what part didn't he get? I don't know. And I said, you know what? Let's do this. Why don't you grab one of the angels? And so he looked around the tree and he found an angel. And it was a little boy named Aaron. And Aaron is nine years old. And I asked my son, I said, G-Force, you, you kind of know what nine-year-olds like, right? And I said, what do you like? And he talked about this particular Lego set. And what he likes to do is all the Lego sets have ages on them, mm-hmm. like ages four to six. Or So he won't do those because those are for little kids. He looks for the Lego sets that are like 12 to 15. You got to right. be 12 to 15 years old. And he's like, that's the set that he likes to take on. So he likes to, he calls himself a master builder. So he went to Bartel's next door. And I said, you know what? Find a Lego set that you really want that you want, that you have to have. Something that at the age of nine, you're like, oh, I love this. This, this, set. this is under the tree this holiday season. He's like, okay. So now he thinks he's getting some Legos for himself. So he ends up buying these Legos, and then we take those Legos, and we're walking next door. Sidebar, can you get out of a store with one item no. when you have a nine-year-old? No, it's impossible. Is, is it po- like, could you go in? Let, let's say you went into Fred Meyer, you went into Bartels, and you're like, <laughs> we're getting one thing. We have to go in, and all I need is some coffee creamer. Is it even possible oh, you've to shopping. go in oh. and just get one item? No, because they have to get something for him, something for the dog, right. something for me. Yeah, so That's what I you've thought. Been, you've been shopping with it. Anyway, so then we went next door. We went next door. And I said, reach into the Bartels bag and pull out those Legos. And these are Legos that he thinks we just bought for him. And I said, and take that angel. And we tape the angel to the box. And we put the box under the tree. And he said, what are we doing? And I said, well, now we're going to walk away. He's like, what? I said, now we're going to walk away. We got out to the car, and I said, do you get it now? He goes, Daddy, I get it. I said, how does that feel? He said, Daddy, it feels great. 
as we head into the holidays, don't forget, is it possible that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive? I have a nine-year-old at home that would say, heck yeah. It's the Ron and Don Show, just getting started, only on the Ron and Don Radio Network, and we come back. Do you eat a big breakfast or a big dinner or a big lunch? Do you snack through the day? There's some new research as we head into 2020. If you don't want those extra pounds that you carry around for the rest of the year that you gain during the holidays, wait till you hear this. Talk about it next right here. Help cops help kids. Go to ronanddon.com right now and buy a t-shirt. And $5 from every t-shirt sale will help kids like me. Hey, I don't know if this happened to you. It happened to me the other day. I jump in my truck. I have a Forerunner. It's real wheel drive, and it used to be when I had these old tires on it. In fact, the tires that came from the Toyota manufacturer, the truck would spin out all the time, and I had a hard time controlling the truck. Well, what I did is I went to Les Schwab, and they put on some brand new tires. They have their own tire line now, and I'm telling you, it has made a world of difference in the way that my truck performs. I no longer have to put it in four-wheel drive, but it gets rainy out, and I used to have to do that with the other tires. So if you're looking for some brand new tires, and you want to make Make sure that these tires are going to perform when it rains out or when you're heading up to the pass and all the snow and everything else. What you want to do is you want to stop by a Les Schwab Tire Center and say, hey, let me look at the custom Les Schwab tires in the Les Schwab Tire Line, all right? Yeah, you can be a part of something really, really incredible too because Les Schwab right now has a big toy drive going on. We want to make sure that every child in Western Washington gets a toy for the holidays. LesSchwab.com. Find one of those locations near you. Just go to LesSchwab.com and don't forget Les Schwab doing the right thing. You know it matters. Don't go anywhere unless you want to. It's the Ron and Don Show starring Ron and Don and sometimes me at RonandDon.com. All right, health and uh, fitness is something that I really care about. Ron and Don, by the way, live from the Les Schwab Studios. Don't forget to stop by Les Schwab Tire Center uh, during the holidays. Drop off a new unwrapped toy. They'll make sure a kiddo gets it uh, just in time for the holidays. How do you eat? Do you eat a, a big... Are you a big breakfast person, a big dinner person? How do you eat? Uh, if, if, if weight was no issue, I would just be a big eater all the time. Like, I love everything you just said. Like, I could go three meals a day big. Uh, but I've had to change it. Now I do small. I do a very small breakfast right when I get up. And then I have a snack at 930 in the morning uh, that's also very small. And then, and then that gets me to lunch. Yeah. Something we've talked about in the fitness community for a long time is that instead of eating these big three meals, the big, the big three every day, uh, maybe what we should do is do what Jennifer Aniston does, and she eats five to six meals during the day, and they're smaller meals, and they're not giant meals, and it just kind of keeps supposedly your metabolism rolling. Now what they're saying, and we've seen this, uh, especially in the dieting community, the fitness community, that there's something about long-term fasting and that people are beginning to fast in fact i was talking to my little cousin josh i saw him a few months ago uh during uh uh right before the holidays and he was telling me he, he's a construction worker and a bodybuilder and he gets up in the morning and he doesn't eat anything until noon he fasts all morning long and even when he's out doing construction work and even when he's out doing his bodybuilding stuff he said initially it's really hard because you're not getting those sugar hits that you would typically get in the morning from your that food. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fast. So so he'll start and then between noon and eight o'clock is when he consumes all his food between noon and eight. And then after eight o'clock, all the way through the next day until noon again, uh, he doesn't eat anything. Doesn't snack, doesn't nothing. All he does, he'll 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 drink water and every once in a while uh, have a beer. He said as a result of that, because it's not just about how you look, it's about how you feel. And he said it took some time for his body to adapt to that. But now that his body body has adapted to that, he said, number one, uh, he is able to maintain the weight that he wants to, to maintain, but he also said that he has a lot more energy and he just feels better when he's not trying to digest food all the time. Here's what they're saying. Here's what they're saying. Some new research out. Because typically what we do is we'll eat that breakfast in the morning and then throughout the course of the day, we'll eat, we'll snack. And then all of us, I grew up in a Midwest house where you have the big dinner. You have the big dinner Meat at and night. Potatoes. Yeah, and then typically some kind of dessert after that. You brush your teeth, you go to bed. Now what they're saying is if you're going to have a big meal, a big one, 
big meal, first meal of the day, breakfast. Sit down, have a big breakfast. They say, number one, you should have a big breakfast because that is when your metabolism is most efficient. Number two, because it's most efficient and you're having that big breakfast, it says what it will do is stave off uh, having those hunger pains throughout the course of the day. It depends on what you eat, though. You have to eat, it says 25 grams of protein, moderate fiber, like uh, and some fruits and berries, and then like a sprouted grain toast, maybe something like an avocado with some fats in it. If you eat like just a bowl of cereal, like a giant, or, like a bunch of carbs, like I'm going to have six pancakes, okay, then you're going to be hungry again right away. Like it, it depends on what you eat. It, I, I, this is... This is very interesting. Here's the thing I'll say to people if you struggle with your weight, because you you haven't struggled with your weight the way I have. Like you, you're the guy that you work out, your weight's been pretty stable for the most part. There have been a couple fluctuations over the year. If I but, didn't though, I, I would be I would weigh thirty to forty pounds more than I do. I understand. If I if I if I didn't work out, and also you know I pay I pay close attention to my diet. You so do. That's what I'm saying. Here, I here, pay, I, 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 so, so here's something that people can do though. So there's some people out there that just they have the metabolism and they can just their body can burn anything that's not that's not me right but he, here's the thing because people are going to start to think about this you bring up new year's is right around the corner first thing to do don't change anything just start writing down what you eat because most people do not realize and this was me you don't realize all the hidden things that you eat in your mind you think you're doing one thing in reality you're doing another so i, I use an app on my on my phone called lose it it's free and every time you put something in your mouth you write it down it's either a snack it's breakfast lunch or dinner and so if you do that religiously for a couple weeks don't change a thing all you do is just look at just write it down then go back after a week or two and just look at it and go, oh my God, I had uh, two muffins here. I had a cookie over there. I had a, a double dinner that one day that I kind of forgot about because we had an early thing, a happy hour, and then I actually went out to dinner later. And so, and then and did I have three drinks there or I had four drinks? So you just, just write it down. And then, and then just, uh, the next phase for me was, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something that's super easy. Uh, instead of having a whole pizza, I'm going to have a half a pizza <laughs> instead of having a but, Dick's but, deluxe but, and on. a cheeseburger. But, I'm just going to have one cheeseburger. You're going to have half a pizza, but instead of getting the 12 inch, you're getting the 18 inch. Right. And so, <laughs> but seriously, cause a lot of times people try to go hardcore intermittent fasting for 16 hours a day. It's too much. Mm. So just learn what you're doing right now. Instead of having four beers, have two beers instead of like eating, you know, 65 wings at the football game, have 25 wings. And so just watch your port, eat, eat exactly what you're eating right now and just make the portion smaller. Do that for a couple weeks and then think about how you feel. And then you can maybe do an elimination diet. Then maybe you're like, okay, I'm not going to do carbs for a week or I'm not going to do dairy for a week or whatever. And then pay attention. The, the biggest part, if you struggle with your eating is you got to pay attention to how it feels. That's the thing most people don't don't do. And a guy that's a bodybuilder, he's used to paying attention to how his body is is oh, reacting to stuff. Good point. Yeah. But for a guy like you that is running all the time and working out, you're used to thinking, oh, how do I feel now? I ate this much protein. Most people don't know what they're eating at all. Hmm. So start out, and then you'll look at this thing at the end and, and lose its cool, and you go, oh, I'm I'm eating 85% carbs and 25 percent fats and almost no protein you're gonna feel like crap mm. but then if you go okay next week i'm gonna do 33 percent carbs 33 percent fat 30 percent protein how do i feel when i do that well what if i eat, make my my protein even more how does that feel what if i did you know what i'm saying yeah pay attention it, it, and but what you're saying is good advice i'm just saying most people can't jump from where they are right now to that yeah, I, I will say this too. You have to think about what you're doing that day. So uh, this morning I went on a run, uh, a sun up run with my with my little dog, and we went on a, just a, a little six mile run. I can't eat a big breakfast before I go on that six mile run. I just can't. It's a banana, it's a cup of coffee, uh, and it's a half a Lara bar, and that's it. After that, though. In the next 30 minutes, I make sure that I eat something because I want to fill my glycogen tank, and I'm not going to go into that right now. But then through the course of the day, I might eat a little more at lunch, a little less at dinner, 
Uh, and then, and then, as your body begins, if you try, try to intermittent fasting, what your body is doing, instead of just living and burning off of sugar, it starts to burn fat. And once it starts to burn fat during intermittent fasting, that's when you're really going to re- begin to see results. And initially, you won't feel a lot of energy. In fact, you feel a lack of energy. But if you hang in there with that fasting, you get a couple weeks down the road, boom, you'll start feeling the way that my cousin uh, Josh feels uh, about that. So anyway, I think just paying attention to what we're putting in and also paying attention what to, to what your activity level is during the day kind of helps you understand about how many calories you should consume. So if you're not exercising that day, you're probably going to consume a little less. If you have a big hike coming up, maybe you're going to consume a little bit more. All right. Anyway, it's the Ron and Don Show, only on the Ron and Don Radio Network, and we come back. Hey, do you want to sit down with us? Because we would love to sit down with you. We'll tell you what we do during the Ron and Don Sit Down uh, next on the other side Hey, Ron and Don here for Les Schwab. Don, it is winter driving season. A lot of folks are going to head up to ski. They're going snowboarding. They're trying to get over the pass. Maybe it's time to go visit grandma for the holidays, and you know you're driving over to eastern Washington. This is the time of year. that you, Do you know if your tires are safe? Do you know if you're ready? Do you need studs? Do you need chains? There's a lot going on for winter safety. Well, and where you got to be careful is a lot of times you can go up to the pass. You can't get turned around and like, hey, you need chains or cables, or you can't move forward, and now you're stuck in the pass. Or let's say you have chains and cables and you haven't put them on in a couple of years and you don't know how to put them on. Now you're in a panic in the past trying to put them on. You don't know how to do it. And now you're having to go over and ask other motorists, how do I put these chains and cables on? And a lot of times they're trying to put on their own. Stop by Les Schwab Tire Center. If you have chains and cables right now, they'll show you how to put them on, even if you didn't buy them from the store. If you don't have them, stop by Les Schwab Tire Center. Make sure you have tires, uh, chains, and tire cables as we head into the holiday season and as we head into this winter season, all right? LesSchwab.com. Let's say it together doing the right thing it matters this winter all right episode number 41 of the run and don show would you please hit the subscribe button that way when a new episode comes out boom it'll come right to you and you don't have to go searching for us anytime i run into anyone they're like where are you i'm like uh, I'm standing in aisle number seven with you right now. Where's Don? I'm trying to buy some lentils. Where are you? And then they're like, where's Ron? I'm like, I don't know because our name's Ron, but we don't live together. So nonetheless, we can call him right now if you want to. Uh, a Ron and Don sit down. That is when we are together. We will sit down with you, talk about your real estate journey, whether you're buying, selling, investing, you're thinking about the future and you're like, hey, as we head into 2020, I think I might want to make a move. Or maybe I should hang on to this house. Let's be a part of that. Sit down. We'll grab a cup of coffee. We can come to you. You can come to us. Reach out to Ron. Ron at windermere.com. Send him an email today. We'll get that set up. You can also go to ronanddon.com. Click on the radio microphone. Everything about the show. And also click on our real estate sign. Everything about our real estate business powered by Windermere. All right, so a lot of people are going to their holiday parties right now. I've been seeing it posted on Facebook. I'm seeing it all, all over Instagram where you got to go to this uh, your holiday party. I suggest not getting loaded at the holiday party. That's just me. But some people do what you want, I guess. If you've uh, if you've always been flirting with the lady over in accounting, maybe now's your shot. But I, for me, I don't like to go too far in the tank at the holiday. When party. they walk in and they hand you two two drink tickets, maybe take one drink ticket and then give the other drink ticket away and have the one drink. Don't get in the photo booth and get the hell out of there. Right? Maybe. It's Depends always on your office. It's always the photo because there's a guy there that has collected eight of those tickets and right. he's getting in the photo booth with everyone and he will be the one next day that was going, Oh my gosh, what was I thinking? And why is that on my Facebook? That page? brings us to uh, the office party for St. John's Properties. This okay. is a real estate development company in Baltimore. Uh, the founder's name is Edward St. John. That's why he called it St. John Properties. 198 people work uh, for this firm and so they do some big developments there in Baltimore. And so uh, Edward is getting up there in years. He's done very well for himself in life. And he thought this year, he's like, we're going to have a great party. We're going to have the photo booth. It's going to be open. Uh, everybody's get their drink tickets on. Uh, we're going to have a live band. It's going to be a, a real good deal. And so he got to thinking a couple months ago, what should I, what should I do as Edward, the owner of this company, 
for should we do bonuses this year? Should we do a tchotchke? Should I, you know, make a little gift that I give to everybody? Like, wh- what's the thing I should do? And so he got the thing. He's like, well, we did a pretty good year. It's like, maybe I should give everyone bonuses. So he started to think. We've got 198 people. All right, if I do a thousand dollars a piece, that's 198 grand. He's like, okay, that's a pretty big uh, a chunk of change. It's like, what if I did two thousand dollars a piece? What would that be? So he starts doing the math in his head. And so then he's like, okay, what if I just took a million dollars and I split it up with everybody? Uh, and so he did the math. He's like, what if I did $2 million? Next thing you know, he, he gets on the stage at the Baltimore, uh, the 198 people at St. James Properties, uh, and he or St. John's Properties. He says, everyone, I'm going to do something. We've had a very good year. I wasn't expecting to do this. How many drink tickets is he in? I don't know how many drink tickets Edward's in. Because it seems like, and I know the story that's coming, it seems like he was in a lot of, he took a lot of drink tickets in if he was deciding this on the fly. He said, I don't think he was deciding on the fly. Okay. Because he says, uh, he had a, a, a slideshow up behind him. He says, uh, if you work for me, not the spouses, but just the 198 employees, if you could stand up right now. He goes, I got to thinking about this. I'm so grateful for the, the company culture. I'm so grateful for how hard you have worked for me, some of you for many, many years. Right now, what I want, he goes, I've never done this before. Every single employee right now, you are getting a check this year, a bonus check of $50,000. And so he took out $10 million mm. out of his own bank account and he gave each employee a $50,000 one-time bonus because he thinks he's going to retire here relatively soon. Um, and the people, they have photographs uh, of this that he hired a photographer because he wanted to get uh, some certain people that he knew their reaction shots. Folks were absolutely floored, as you can imagine, uh, especially some of the lower, the, the low, I don't want to say lower ranked, the lower em- salaried employees. Maybe people that haven't been uh, working there as long. Maybe they don't have the tenure uh, or, yeah, of maybe others. The office support, some yeah. people in sure. the, those lines. So yeah. I just thought that was a very cool story that is tangential to real estate, but good on, on Edward St. John. He's been very, very uh, blessed to have a lot of these great folks work for him for years. How do you top that next year, though? You don't, because you're going to be retiring. You're sitting there, everybody got that check for 50000 and then you're like, okay, really? Really? Are you kidding me? Next year, you get a, a tote bag. Totally. So one other quick real estate story. I want to get your uh, reaction on this. Uh, the, the, our uh, Seattle Market Trends just came out. I put it up on my Instagram and Facebook if you want to see it. It's a little video they put together. So we were reading all these stories in the fall that the Puget Sound area, Seattle specifically, and probably Bellevue, we were seeing it go back towards a buyer's market. And so the, the way that economists think about buyer's market versus seller's market, you might hear this term a lot, is how much inventory is available, how many months of inventory. So they take how many houses usually sell in, in this given month, and then they're like, they multiply it out by the inventory, and if you get over four months, four to five months of inventory, that's considered a balanced market. So we have, if you have about th- four months of inventory, uh, that would be balanced. If it's like six to seven months of inventory, that's a buyer's market. If it's under that, that would be a seller's market. And so it was it started to creep towards buyers. We were getting more months of inventory. And so the needle was moving towards the buyers. And so buyers were responding uh, in kind. Now in in October, November, going into December, experts, many experts thought, well, that's going to continue. We're going to enter into 2020 as a as a buyer's it hasn't been a buyer's market in seattle proper for years and so we're seeing this and and many experts thought oh it's gonna this trend is going to continue as we as the year ends and we go into 2020 it's going to be more towards balance more towards four months and then maybe going into the first quarter of 2020 the needle will break into the buyer's side for the first time in a long time then what we saw is it started to move towards buyers dawn and then it moved back Mm. So in an unexpected move in our last market trend report, it's back to a solid seller's market. It was going towards two and almost uh, above two months of inventory. It, it rocketed back to 1.3 months. That is a solid seller's market. Uh, and I just want to see what you thought about that. Did it take you by surprise and what you think? Well, it did take me by surprise because I did think uh, there's going to be a little more balance. And I think what happened is, number one, money is cheap. 
Money is super cheap right now. Uh, I think number two, uh, there's an excise tax that's about to change here. And we don't have to go into... And it has to do with uh, more expensive homes, at least expensive homes, but excise tax. The rates change in 2020. Yeah, January the, 1, the rates are changing. Yeah, the rate's going to change. And then I also think that typically, if people are going to sell, they don't sell this time of year unless they have to sell this time of year. Because if you have to sell this time of year, then there might be a deal to be had. So I think a lot of people that couldn't compete in the spring weren't paying attention this summer. Uh, they came back this fall and they said, you know what, we're going to jump in here at the end and we're going to find a deal. And what they found is the deal is there's going to be multiple here's, offers here's the deal. on a lot of these properties. And I think that's going to come screaming uh, into 2022. So that's what I always tell people, though. Like, even if you think in 2020, buying a piece of real estate is going to be so damn expensive in the Puget Sound, you are going to look back 10 years from now and go, wow. Can you believe what this place is worth? That was a very cheap property uh, 10 years ago. And now here you are 10, 10 years later because you jumped in. You made a decision. You pulled the trigger. You even bought an investment property. And that's what creates real wealth and life-changing money. So anyway, we'd love to be a part of your journey. It's the Ron and Don sit down. It all just starts with a cup of coffee, you guys. We sit down. We have a cup of coffee. Uh, you get to see what Ron looks like and what I look like. And it is very surprising, isn't it? Hey, how am I been doing it's on my very, very surprising. my stained shirts? I've been trying to pay attention now with the sit downs. You know not what? Having stained shirts. You are. You have these. Um, I don't know what it is. You have these amazing. And and I, your shoes are very comforting to me. My at the shoes. Sit yeah, you've started wearing very comforting shoes. Thank you. Yeah, I like, bought a couple. I got some loafers on. Yeah. Like, First time I've ever bought yeah, shoes like, like this. Like you have a loafer on right now, and I sit there with you, and I'm very comforted by the loafer. That but you the have shoes on. are still, uh, the shirts are still stained. They're horrible. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on that. Yeah, it's but it doesn't food, matter because I'm particles. staring at your shoes the whole time. Very good. Ron and Don sit down. If you want to be a part of that, reach out to Ron. Ron at Windermere.com, and uh, we'll get you scheduled. All right. Hey, thanks for stopping by and sharing this week with us. We really do appreciate it. And what did we talk about on the episodes this week? We talked about your mindset as we head into 2020. Uh, we talked about two of our friends that have stage four cancer. And they were given weeks to live, and here they are, five and six years later, and they're still alive with stage four cancer, living these incredible lives. And what they both share with Ron and I is, you know what? You can have courage and bravery, or you can have comfort. And a lot of times, though, you can't have those things together. I choose courage and bravery. What do you choose as we head into 2020? All right, you keep your head up your shoulders back. We'll see you next time for episode number 42, you guys. All brought to you by Les Schwab and Ron and Don, licensed brokers. We'll see you real soon. All right? Live from the Ron and Don studios. Why wouldn't we? Ron and Don. Ron and Don. Ron and Don. Ron. And Don. Ron. And Don. Ron. <laughs> Don. <laughs> On the Ron and Don Radio Network, man. Okay, how much do I have to pay you for this? <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> <laughs>